Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back to Artistic License. My Thursday stream, we do a little bit of whatever I want. Today, we're gonna be playing some more Monster Prom. But before that, hi, welcome in guys. Welcome Koneko, welcome Kitty, yes. Okay, yes, we're cheering for the cereal, the cheerial. She is here. What? Look at this. I am legit. Focus. Hello. Thank you. I am legit so excited to try this cereal. Okay. I can't wait. Um, but I'm going to because I want more people to to see. Uh, but yeah, here's what here's what the box looks like. I got four flavors. I got this is peanut butter that we're gonna try tonight. I've also got fruity frosted and cocoa that we're gonna try. Um, we're gonna try two of them on the other two Thursday streams. We're actually gonna try another one on Saturday. So we're doing a Sims 2 Legacy stream on Saturday. So we're going to try that. Um, I used to eat cereal a lot as a kid. And uh, and of course, because it's like just full of sugar, I don't eat cereal anymore. So I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to try this and see if like adult cereal is really a good thing. Hey, Ariel, welcome in. How are you doing today, friend? I used to really like cereal, then I didn't. Now I kind of only want specific types because texture. Yeah, I mean, when I do eat cereal as an adult, it's like that, like, um, granola almond, like that type of cereal. But this looks like, this looks like Cheerios. This looks like Cheerios. So we'll do, we'll do a, um, a run. We'll do one run in Monster Prom and then we'll do, we'll do an ad break. Okay. And we'll try some cereal. You guys, how's that sound? I think that sounds pretty fun. Hell yeah. It's 48 hour Friday, Ariel. 48 hour Friday, 48 hour Friday. Okay. Well, you guys know how this goes. We like to start off our Thursday streams with a personality quiz, and we are doing the uh, some Halloween ones. We're doing some Halloween ones. I cannot have the granola type. I need flaky or Cheerio type. Oh, oh, okay. I understand, Koneko. I understand. I do like flaky type. I do like actually still um, some Frosted Flakes, but even sometimes that's too sweet. Okay, what kind of spooky creature are you? That's what we're doing. You guys should do it too, um, and we can all learn what kind of spooky creatures we are. Happy spooky season. Answer some questions and get assigned a spooky creature. Don't mind if I do. Okay, we're going to pick a fall activity. Pumpkin bread. Eating is an activity. Okay. Stealing roadsides from the interstate. Um, experiencing oncoming seasonal depression. Hmm. Be on Twitter. Well, <laughs> lay in the autumn sun. Hmm. Maybe I'll ask Levi to make some pumpkin bread soon. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Pick a Halloween decoration. Jack-o'-lantern, large skeleton, giant yard spider, beanie babies. <gasps> beanie babies. I actually have some beanie babies back on the, the stuffies back there. We have some beanie babies back there. I have the fox one. I think I have two of the fox ones, two slides. One of the bat one. Anyway, we're going with beanie babies. Although the one that's closest to what we've got in our yard right now is the jack-o'-lanterns. We don't have a jack-o'-lantern, but we do have some pumpkin stuff. Summer depression, but yeah, I have to go. Yeah, I had to go for the seasonal depression. I had so many and now I have none. Oh, yeah, I did. I had a huge number of Beanie Babies, but slowly over the years, they ended up being given away or donated or sold. And now I just have a few of them. Let me see. Oh, it looks like I have the Husky too. And I have the the Chinese New Year. I mean, not New Year, Chinese um Zodiac Tiger. I have the Chihuahua. Um... And, this, and a Scotty dog and a lamb. Yeah, and I do have two slides. That one, I remember his name. Okay, anyway, next. Do you have trust issues? Nah, yeah, only with strangers, only with people close to me. Mmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm a pretty open person, but that don't mean I trust you. <laughs> I trust you guys, though. You guys are all cool. If you come, if you come to watch the stream live, you're cool. If you watch on YouTube the next day, you're also cool. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Maybe I don't have beanie babies, but I have a few, uh, Thai plushies, white reindeer and red drag. I had no idea Thai made plushies other than beanie babies. I guess they must make something else now. I don't know. I have seen displays of the newer beanie babies. They're not floppy anymore. So like, why? I don't get it. Are you donating your body to science? Oh. Maybe. I really hadn't thought about that. I mean, I know I don't want to actually be buried in a casket or anything because that feels like super wasteful to me, but maybe donating to science. I don't know. Sure. Today, I think that's a good idea. I don't really have to worry about this for a long time, but today we'll say yes. 
Um, do you like Halloween even? Yeah. Um, I love Halloween. The shit fucking rocks. We might be choosing that. I like the holiday and concept, but choosing a costume is always really stressful for no reason. Like I'm having a good time, but I hate the texture and fake spider webs. <laughs> I love Halloween. The shit fucking rocks. Um, I think they're officially not called Beanie Babies, but they're similar. Oh, I see. So there's just like a different line that Ty makes. The Beanie is a massive eyes are terrifying. I agree, Ariel. The ones that we had when we were kids were are way fucking cuter. What's your go-to candy? Fruit, Snickers, M&M's, Milk Duds, Candy Corn, Sour Patch Kids. Okay. Did y'all know that I hate M&M's? I think the chocolate in M&M's is gross. Anyway, I really, really like Snickers, but these this is not my favorite candies. Like, my favorite candies are, like, I love Almond Joys. I love Paydays. Out of these, like, if we're talking about what's your go-to candy, well, like, Snickers, but, like, this is about Halloween. And on Halloween, we eat candy corn. So we're voting candy corn. You don't have, oh, you don't have mine. Oh, they don't have, oh, I didn't even scroll down enough to see they had an answer. You don't have mine. Yeah, okay, anyways, we're going with that. Yeah, take a pic and post it in the Discord, Koneko. I'm like really curious because I've never noticed that Ty had another line besides Beanie Babies. Jujubees, Jujubees are pretty good, Kitty. I can only eat some of them though. I get like, I don't know. I just, I can only eat a few and then I'm done with them. If you were a creature, what would your creature pastime, what would be your creature pastime of choice? Hunting and killing and eating, wallowing, going very long distances, affection, affection. Yeah, affection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. What sort of costume are you wearing this year? I am actually going to be Luna Lovegood this year for Halloween. We at work um, every year, the different teams, we do, we have like a whole Halloween contest thing where we decorate our areas and we do costumes. Anyway, my team voted Harry Potter because one of the girls on the team um, actually finished reading all the Harry Potter books for the first time. She's like my age. And somehow she just didn't read them when she was a kid. I don't know. She skipped them. Anyway, she just finished reading them for the first time. So we were like, oh, we have to do Harry Potter in honor of that. Anyway, I'm going to be Luna. Everybody was very um, ecstatic. Uh, for me to do Luna. They thought it'd be perfect. So I'm, I'm excited. What sort of costume are you wearing this year? Okay. Something sexy. Every day I put on a new costume to live life. Halloween simply one of many days. <laughs> a popular character from something I enjoy. Actually, I think that's the answer. Something spooky, no costume, just candy and a good movie. I've done this Halloween too. I've done ha this Halloween too. It's fun. Okay. Ideal fall drink. Mold wine, hot cider, hot tea, hot flavored coffee with all the fixins. Flavor coffee with all the fixins. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Although I do love a good apple cider and I, I love tea, actually. I really do love tea. Um, yeah, I've got like a I got like a, Levi actually got me a gift recently um, with some really fun teas that I'm going to try. It's going to be really fun. Maybe I'll show you guys at some point. Probably going to be one of my D&D &D characters. One of my favorite characters depends on if it's warm enough to wear my skirt. That is a good question, Koneko. It's usually hot here on Halloween, to be quite honest. It's usually not that cold yet. Um, just a little bit cold. Pick a pick. Oh, Jack coming to get you, friend. What? Oh, I have to go with spooky, scary skeletons. Oh, but they also have these. These sugar cookies are so fun. You got Mothman? Oh, Angelus Koneko. Okay, wait, let's see what I get. I've got a couple more questions. We're picking a sound. Cat purring. A knife through pumpkin flesh. A new podcast. Rain against the windows. Chanting incantations. Hmm. If y'all listen to podcasts, you better you better be on my YouTube channel listening to our past interstage window episodes. That's all I got to say about that. But anyway, cat purring, obviously. Um, a sight. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. First frost on the lawn. A clear blue autumn sky. Discord notification. <laughs> a graffiti on an overpass. A potluck meal. I think clear blue autumn sky is like, that's like the vibe. The moon stunning worthy of worship so far away in the void of space. Yes. The problem with celebrating Halloween here is that my study club celebrates in November because exams are first. So it's usually way colder when we get to celebrating. Oh, that makes sense, Koneko. I'm sorry you guys have to wait to celebrate. A smell. Okay. Sneaking out cold air and gasoline. Studying. Printer inking coffee. Orange Yankee candle. Pumpkin and wax. Equinox bonfire. Smoke and marshmallows. Forest walk. Dead leaves and living wood. Oh, mm, I think printer inking coffee, not studying, more like creating printer inking coffee. Yes. Tell me about your favorite ghost story. No, we don't. We're not typing. Oh, oh, there's one more. Okay. Usually the text is the last one. 
What's your favorite spooky creature that's not an answer on this quiz? Werewolf. I already knew. I, let's read the others. Clown. Scary kind. We've got goblin, demon, just a regular dude. Regular dudes are spooky. Okay. Regular dudes are really spooky. But anyway, the answer is werewolf. So werewolf's not on this quiz. That's interesting. All right. Let's see what we get. The great pumpkin. I, for one, welcome your oncoming pumpkin world domination. Congratulations, you guys. We're going to I'm going to dominate the world. Don't Mothman, you can come too. Kitty, did you do it? Did you do the quiz? Did you do the quiz? We all got different answers. What did you get? Ariel, if you did it too, you tell me. I got the mood. Oh, the moon. Oh, you got the moon. Oh, I see. Okay, here's the answers. Mothman, Swamp Thing, the moon, Gulper Eel, Ghost Teen. Is that like Danny Phantom? I think that's what that picture is. Vampire Roommate. <laughs> like what we do in the shadows. Um, Fresno Nightcrawler, House Centipede, my IRL Black Cats. <laughs> True crime. You can if you want to. We like to do them together, but you don't have to, friend. It's up to you. Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, it's it's just for fun. You don't have to do it, but you can. But if you do, you have to tell me what you got. <laughs> um, we are going to here. We'll switch back to webcam for a second. There we go. Um, we do have more sticker packs to give away. We do have more sticker packs to give away, you guys. So I've got these. I've got these. We'll probably we'll probably do this. When we do the ad break, I didn't come up with a gimmick this week of what to do to give them away. <laughs> so maybe I'll just randomize the people that are hanging out um, that haven't got one yet or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was so excited that the cereal showed up. I didn't spend any time this afternoon thinking about like what we're going to do for the giveaway. I like the way the stickers feel. Oh, I'm so glad, Kitty. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, we're going to do in, uh, probably in November, I'm going to open up a shop and we're going to sell like the real versions of them, not the mock-ups. So they'll be slightly different. The real ones will be slightly different. I will, I will unveil those at a later date. You guys will see. I'm very excited. We're going to be doing a couple more things besides stickers though. More to come later. Okay. Let's close this quiz. It's time for the game. Time for the game. Okay. Good music. Yeah, um, Koneko, last time I checked, um, they were still in the U.S. So, and that happens sometimes when you ship internationally. I know that happens when I ship to my U.K. friends. So I assume that that's, that's going to happen for yours as well. <laughs> mood, Ariel. Big mood. Five things at once, none of them well. <laughs> all right, you guys. All right. Let's switch over so you can see. Monster prom. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. So we're doing this blind, of course, but I did go and I did look at like what the steam achievements are. So I got a little bit of a better idea of how this game kind of works and confirmed some things I was suspecting. There are multiple endings for each character. Okay. There are multiple endings for each character. Um, so we're going to do, we're going to go through and do some of the steam achievements you can also get achievements there's a couple that are really easy like if you do for example like go to the same location every time we can get those so i think that for this first run through that's what we're going to do so you guys help me figure out which location we're going to do we're going to do the same location each time so we can get that achievement another friend is streaming all right thank you koneko for stopping by so happy to see you okay and then the other question is can i remember all the voices that i made up for these characters let's find out <laughs> Okay, one player, yes, we'll do, we're doing a full game. Yeah, full game. Yep, and we're gonna skip this because we already, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know. Yes, oh yeah, yeah, we got new gifts. We got, I added new gifts for like the, uh, for games that we have done recently. So there's like a Vaporeon for when we played the Eevee run of, um, of uh, Legends Arceus. Um, I added a gift for Stray. I added the Sunners from Riven. Um, so yeah, we've got some fun gifts. Okay, yeah, she and we're gonna be Karen. Uh, where's the lowercase? Yes, A A R E N. Okay. okay. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah, we've already we've read this before. Okay. Huzzah! 
We don't, we don't need to say this every time. Yay! Okay, do it again. What? Okay, okay, okay. Oh, you can also get an achievement if you um, ask somebody to prom and they say no. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Okay. Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest prom quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using PhD and bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. And just like before, I'm going to answer these this quiz like is just like how I want to. I'm not trying to min-max it or anything. Democracy is just broken. What would be the best way of choosing the leaders of modern society? Is this the same? We got, we got this question before. Is it the same answers? We create a reality show. Yeah, whoever can play the most heartbreaking violin solo wins. I don't think that was one of the possible answers before. Um... You put all the candidates in an empty room with a wild grizzly bear. I do remember this answer. I do remember this answer. Um, bear should be president. Yeah. Okay. I wonder who will reject you if you have to work. I think that if you just don't interact with them, I mean, I'm assuming if you just don't interact with them and then ask them, then they'll reject you. Because we didn't, we, both the runs we did last time, we did not, there was characters we didn't interact with. If you could put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? You can't rely on the effectiveness of a curse. I prefer to take care of my enemies the old-fashioned way by exposing them to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. Wow. I curse them to fall in love with a wonderful person and be happily married for years before they realize that all of this, their partner, and there was a wild par panther in disguise. Then the panther viciously devours my enemy. Classic. That sounds like a role-play plot. The curse of always meeting obnoxious people at parties who are super into new fad diets and feel the need to explain them in detail. We're going with the panther one. I love it. I love it. it sounds like a role play plot. Your partner just gave you a cool gift for your anniversary, but you totally forgot. Quick, come up with an idea for a great gift. The abstract concept of gratefulness. A pony. Always a pony. The head of their fiercest enemy. A silly toy that makes silly noises. Anything on fire or a weapon. No, no, no. A weapon on fire. <laughs> Anything capable of leading them to an overdose of some sort. Uh, let's get a silly toy that makes silly noises. Okay. Apparently they like that. I don't, I don't know what that means at the end where they give me hearts. I don't, I don't know what that means. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so should we do all audit be a, a theater kid and do all auditorium run? Should we be a nerd and do an all class run or a library? Um, remember, this is where we make moonies. Um, we can be party girl and outdoor run. We can be um, we can do gym. We can dodgeball it every time, or we can be a loner in the bathroom. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? My heart says, my heart says like outdoors or auditorium, but I don't know. Uh, on outdoors was really good a lot when we were trying to get um, Polly. Theater or loner sounds cool to me. Okay, let's do let's do an all auditorium run. Okay, here we go. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though your muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. As you go about your day, you can't help but notice Damien and Scott trying on beige business suits. By the time you get over to them, they've both taken their suits off and are examining them critically. Uh, I didn't really settle on a voice for Damien, so let's let's just let's just try something. Something isn't right. That that doesn't sound very. I don't know. Something isn't right. I don't feel like I can't do like a a, a manly man boy voice. No, you get stats based on what you answer for that quiz. Something isn't right. Mm. Yeah, and I, what was his, his voice? His voice was like, yeah, brah. Yeah, and I really don't want to half-ass our Pokemans cosplay. Coach says to always use your full ass on everything. I'm with you, man. Nobody gives more of a shit about the classic Pocket Humans video game than me. But what the fuck are we missing, man? We've got the suits, the horn room glasses, the sickly pale body paint, everything we need to cosplay Doug and Wilbert. <laughs> the twin type, what is his voice again? Yeah, brah. The twin titans of real estate. I know who they are, Scott. I've played the damn game. Now come on, help me think of what we're missing. You know right away what their costumes need. You reach into your bag and pull out the one thing no human could be caught dead without. A unicycle, a gun. We have to pick gun. We have to pick gun. No human would be caught dead without a gun. 
Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, this is exactly what my costume needed. Come on, Scott, put on your mask and let's head over to the convention. Okay, Damien. Hey, by the way, why is the convention happening over at the First National Bank? In the middle of the day? On a weekday? <laughs> Humans don't ask questions, Scott. Come on, let's go rob that. I mean, make some friends. Spoken like American. Yeah, guns. Guns with a Z. <laughs> guns with a Z because we're, we're millennials. Okay, plus one fun and plus two boldness. Fantastic. All right, I guess we're going for Damien this time, even though, like, I'm very unsettled on his voice. Um... Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's do it. You find Scott and Damien immersed in their favorite mobile game, Pokemans Go, based on the classic pocket humans. <laughs> my Reginald Bossworth uses income tax audit. Oh no, my Lindsay Roberts never saves receipts. It's super effective. Haha, <laughs> and now for the finishing blow. The, wait, what? Reginald contracted lymphoma? Reginald's lymphoma deals 500 physical damage to him and 999 emotional damage to him for his loved ones. Whoa, I won again! Why are all your Pokemon so unhealthy, Damien? Because I make them all smoke cigarettes and live next to toxic waste dumps, obviously. Maybe you should stop that. Where's the fun in that? Let's have another match. Oh, what's this guy's voice? I don't know. What are you two nerds doing? Nerding around? Nerd up nerds. Whoa, Scott, is that you? I didn't recognize you under all that nerdery. What are you doing playing dumb video game with stupid babies? But Pokemon isn't dumb. It's cool because, because no way Scott is going to come up with anything. But if you do, maybe you can score some points with Scott or Damien. Um, show them that a phone equipped with Pokemon's Go can also be used as a football. Say nothing, pelt them with steamed vegetables. Mmm, vegetables. <laughs> ah, vegetables. We hate those. Stop it. Seriously, pelt us with ground beef or something, or at least try snossages or pig's ears. How about some forks and knives? Or some knives and knives? I'm just gonna keep throwing knives. Ah, these knives are almost as bad as the vegetables. Come, guys, come on. Stop throwing carrots and knives at my cousins. You stop, all right, as soon as the wolf pack have retreated out of range. Nice thinking. Finally, a use for vegetables, am I right? <laughs> Damien barely remembers to take the knife out of his hand before high-fiving you. He does, though, so that's a win. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay. Damien. This is Damien Run. Let's go! And we learned we can do this. So I think... I think when you do this, you get, like, creative every time. So, because I think it's, like, you get the different things based on... Yeah. So this is, like, creative run. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good or inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain plus two creativity. Okay, so I still did gain creativity. Fantastic. Later, you see Damien and Miranda chatting around. Being a noisy little bitch, you just nosy little bitch, you decide to insert yourself into their conversation. I look forward to this adventure, so is there anything more wonderful than getting insight into the lives of commoners? You better not pull that shit the whole time. My dads are lords of hell, you know. Technically, I'm royalty too. Are you though? Damien rolls his eyes and turns to you. Miss Panthera paired us up for weeks. Uh, paired us up for a hands-on homework assignment going on an adventure apparently i have some anger issues and a thirst for violence that i should be channeling into something productive <laughs> like a thirst for violence isn't productive in and of itself and i'm supposed to work on being more independent which is so strange since i told my ladies and gentlemen in waiting to fix that for me last week I wonder what sort of adventures might give us the wonderful experience we need to fix our perceived but obviously non-existent flaws. Okay, uh, go on a deep sea quest to steal beautiful pearls from a scary kraken. Journey to a volcano to have a hot time at Fire Mephit Strip Club. Well, obviously this one for, for him. Not so fun. Not so fun. 
But he, why didn't he love that? Neither of them loved that. Anyway. You expect me, royalty, a princess, a royal princess, who is royal, to attend some vile sex show? <sighs> and you expect me, a demon, to put up with that attitude at a strip club? And surely, if you feel the strings of passion in your loins, it will spur the stirrings of passion in your fist. <gasps> what? Miri, did you just make a masturbation joke? Cats, of course not. I meant that if you were so riled up over the naked methods, certainly you would explode and spit out terrible choice of words. Into your proclivity for violence, you shouldn't be tempted to have any feelings whatsoever. The best way for you to lose your violent instincts is to sit in the dark room with no stimuli whatsoever. What a noob. Well, maybe that's the best way for you to learn to be independent too. Maybe it is. Okay, oh, he did like that, okay. They spend their adventure locked in separate dark rooms. Um, okay. Minus two fun, minus two charm. Or minus one charm. Sad. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Auditorium once again. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. But you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. And it's marvelous. Somehow it enhances the pathos of the play in unexpected ways, and that's saying something since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. You gain plus two creativity. Yay! You see Damien about to punch some noob when suddenly a dimensional portal opens up between the two of them. Hey, what the hell? I was about to punch that noob. Oh, it's this guy. Uh, okay. Um, there will be plenty of noobs to punch, my fearsome paramour, when you are mine. What? I have traveled across time and space to find it fit commander for my armies and for my bedroom. Oh, you want me to come over to your kingdom so we can kill people and fuck? I wouldn't put it quite so crassly. Fucking metal. Well, I would. And that sounds doper than hell, which isn't hard because hell is lame, but still. But if Damien goes to another dimension to fucking kill people, how will he fucking kill people with you? There's only one thing to do. Uh, defeat the prince's entire shitty army using nothing but a colander and grapefruit. Show Damien a picture of the prince's army wearing clown shoes and assless chaps. Uh, I don't know. Mm, I think I should defeat them. I think I should use violence. This is violence run. I mean, we said gun before. I think we should choose violence. Yeah. Armed with your trusty colander helm and furious grapefruit, you charge through the rift. The prince's army turns out to be just three dudes, and one of those dudes is just two toddlers in a trench coat. You strain the shit out of them, squeeze the grapefruit juice into their wounds, and toss, toss what's left into a volcano. And what's more, you've live-streamed the entire thing for Damien to watch back home. When you get back, he's applauding. Holy shit, that was so wicked. I've never seen someone be so gratuitous with grapefruit. Screw this interdimensional a-hole. I, I want you to teach me about using limes as an offensive weapon. The prince slinks back to his kingdom to recruit new shitty army while you teach Damien the mysteries of citrus foo. Uh, plus two charm and plus one boldness. Fantastic. Okay, lunchtime. Lunchtime, lunchtime. Where's the boy? He's here. No sooner have you sat down at Damien Miranda's table than a haunting melody fills the air. The melody of cold northern peaks, of cloying sweetness, of a supple bovine. The song of the ice cream wizard. He's here, he's here. I'm gonna eat so much ice cream and then puke on someone I don't like. My goodness, the ice cream wizard only comes but once per solstice during the hour of the ascendant pancake. You see an old dude in a floppy blue hat pushing a refrigerated cart with a dis shit magic painted on the side. Ugh, so many great options to choose. Should I get a magma bar? Brain destroyer? Chocolate broom boomstick? What about fear of death? A frozen cobra? Berserker berry blitz? The wizard's frozen treats invariably turn me into a frog for some reason. Perhaps I simply have not tried the right one yet. But which to try? If only someone would suggest a solution to what is truly the most difficult problem I have ever faced. I try those sugar blasted prince lips. Uh, beat him up and take all his ice cream. Violence. 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 Mother, I crave violence. How boorish! Did someone say bullrush? No, I said boorish, as in lacking social... Ah, I see. You did not mishear me after all, but were simply looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. Joke's on you, Miranda. 
I'm never not looking for an excuse to beat up the ice cream wizard. It's super unhinged, right, kitty? He's like, he's fantastic. Look at all this ice cream I got. This one lets you breathe underwater, and this one licks you. You brigand, you thief. I got you some sugar blasted prince lips. My reservations suddenly seem to have vanished. Good, because I want to try this popsicle. The stick is supposed to reveal how I'm going to die. Huh, who knew my death would involve so many bottlenose dolphins? To celebrate the ice cream heist, Damien takes you to the beach and doesn't even try to drown you. Wow, that's so nice of him. <laughs> Let's go. All right, auditorium, auditorium. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you're struck by lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. You can't nickname, you can't nickname yourself. Girl, what are you doing? Anyway, you tell everyone to call you by it. Also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves of the world. You can't nickname yourself. You can't nickname yourself. I watched my old roommate play this game. It's wild. I'm loving it. We played it last week. I'm, we're playing it every Thursday in October and like, it has amused me so many times. This, the writers of this game are truly hilarious. Hello, keep going. Okay. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Oh, I don't understand, but okay. Fight the feet. You gain plus two creativity. Wow. <laughs> Every new person you romance is my favorite. That's how I feel too, Kitty. They're all amazing. Every single character. We the devs dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of this run. Okay. Um, we do that. What's my nickname? What's my nickname, you guys? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The easy one that people that want to give me a nickname but don't want to think too hard do is Care Bear. That one comes up a lot. All right. There's a... There's a fly. Anyway, let's keep going. You see, you see Damien beating the piss out of a goblin like he always does when he's depressed. You go over and ask him what's up. This is the whole heir to the throne of hell thing. It's really bumming me out. I hate being a prince of hell, and I'm going to hate being a king of hell even more. <sighs> I mean, how am I supposed to rebel against authority when I am the authority? Ugh, not even beating the piss out of this goblin is cheering me up. Damien continues to beat the piss out of the goblin, but his heart clearly isn't in it. I mean, is there anything rad I can do as King of Hell? Literally anything? Um, you're forgetting about the ultimate way to fight authority, total war. Kings have, have harems and I definitely join yours. We said we were choosing violence. We said we were choosing violence, but I really want to choose the horny answer. We're choosing the horny answer. Thank you for validating me, friends. Not so charming. <laughs> Why is that not so charming? He seems into it. You had me at harem, but then you lost me at I join yours. You think I need to become king in order to degrade my dick with the likes of you? No, listen. The reason we're not fucking right now is because I don't want to fuck you. Because you're ugly. <gasps> Go get a life. Now slither away before I stop being polite. You slither away, you lose plus, minus one boldness and minus one charm. Oh, I should have chosen violence. I should have chosen violence, you guys. I should have chosen violence. Fucked up. Fucked up. Oh yeah, this game goes out goes it says everything and it goes everywhere. It says everything and it goes everywhere. Okay. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet, you gain plus two creativity. You see Damien pacing the stage, stabbing the air with his cardboard lance. Motherfuckers, I don't do things if I don't look badass doing them. This play is not an exception. I'm gonna live so motherfucking truthfully through these imaginary circumstances. The script is just so, I don't know, vague. Why is the Dark Knight so evil? Where does his anger come from? Why all the murder? And yes, when it comes to plays, I want there to be a reason for murder. I just don't need one in real life. 
Um, you better give him a reason not to murder you just in case. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I guess we have to go with violence. Um, the night was driven uh, by the death of his parents or his spouse. It's never been done. B method, go on a real life killing spree. Violence, violence, violence. It's not like I really need an excuse to go on a killing spree, but this is a good excuse as any. Just gotta grab my razor and iron and a cheese grater and anything to gag the screaming. Holy shit, that does not bode well. Next week, you find a police knocking at your door. At first, you're afraid Damien framed you for murder, but then it turns out he's framed you for murder or s plural. Fuck. Minus two money and minus one boldness. Trying to date Damien is hazardous. Trying to date Damien is, 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 this is hazardous, guys. This, this is, this is difficult. He is a challenge. Okay. Um, here we go. You find Damien and Vera contemplating a huge slab of unidentifiable prime meat. All right, Damien, I know we had our share of disagreements during the convoluted poaching expedition. <laughs> like when you told me not to bring all my knives. But I trust we can now put our differences behind us and enjoy the fruits of our labors. You mean the meats of our labors? Yes, together we will enjoy this raw, bloody cut of meat as a symbol of our- Wait, raw and bloody? You mean you're not even going to try using fire on it? Might get your rejection badge, we'll see, kitty. <laughs> of course I use fire. I specifically instructed the chef to prepare this meat while glancing briefly at a lit stove. Did the fire ever, you know, touch the meat? What would be the point of that? I cut this fire can only be eaten ultra rare. Oh, I cut this fine can? Oh, a cut this fine can only be eaten ultra rare. Like hell it can. You wait here while I get my culinary flamethrower. Damien, please, let's be reasonable about this. What is reasonable? If we can't come to an agreement, let's appeal to an arbitrary third party. Karen, surely, Karen will surely make the intelligent choice for us. Isn't that right? No, we're choosing violence. Um, my word, the steak is too cooked to already rub some ice on it and douse it in blood. The only correct way to enjoy a steak is after its charred remains have been retrieved from a burning building. It pains... I can't believe I'm about to recommend well done steak. I can't, I, mmm, 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 my heart, my heart, mm. <sighs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's the, he's a monster. That's what I like to hear. That and the sounds of screaming people fleeing a burning building. But roasting totally destroys the flavors of... Done talking. Fire time now. As you flee screaming from the burning building, you find Damien right beside you. He takes your hand and smiles. Oh, so now he's into me. It almost makes at the third degree burns and massive property damage worth it. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's go. Okay, auditorium or auditorium all the time. I guess it's time. It's time to buy something. We only have three money. I don't think I can buy anything. Hey, why would you study and prepare for your future when you can come here and buy some weird shit instead? Am I right? Yeah, I'm too poor for all of it. I'm too poor. There is an achievement for, for buying this disgusting thing. Kitty, what should I do? Should I buy the disgusting tampon or should I buy the gift that keeps on giving? This gives you random shit from we discovered that last time, because I got two different things. And this gives you an achievement. You're playing for Go Weird. Okay, here we go. Let's play the disgusting tampon. Yep, achievement unlocked. It's called Perv. Yeah, who would want to save money for their college fund when you can spend it on weird stuff that's most likely useless? That's the spirit champ. All right. I don't know what you're supposed to do with the tampon. I don't know if you can do anything with the random shit you buy, but I got an achievement. <laughs> okay, auditorium again. Maybe I can share it with the vampire, I don't know. But it doesn't seem like I keep my items run to run. So I don't really know how that works. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel that you're not as good as the role requires you to be. There doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil one of many, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. Plus two creativity and minus three years of your life. 
As you're into the deal, but who cares? They weren't happening in game anyway. That's right. <laughs> Later, you see Damien packing a bag. I'm going away for the weekend to detention. I have fucking detention again. Why? Just because I rigged the teacher's lodge door with booby traps that poured selkie piss on whoever opened it? I mean, I didn't even set anything on fire this time. Let me spill the tea. This school, this school is strict as fuck. <laughs> anyway, just brainstorming some ways to keep things entertaining beyond fucking ditching. Do it, do it, just fucking ditch, do it. Cross species economic and social barriers to make lifelong friends with a diverse group of students in detention. What, no, no, just ditch, just di right? Right, that's the more violent answer, ditch. If skipping detention were a possibility, I would have done that ages ago. I would have skipped detention before I even got detention. But you know what comes after detention? Expulsion. And if I'm expelled, how am I supposed to get into a college good enough to kickstart my career as a fiery threat to international safety? What a noob. Fucking moron. I'll just set the teacher's shoes on fire when he's not looking. Damn it, you're so bad at detention. You should just give detention for how bad you are at detention. God damn it. I am not very good at dating Damien. We are not soulmates. We are not meant to be. Hopefully he will accept my prom invite at the end of this. Okay, here we go. When you reach Liam and Damien's table, you find it absent of food, but covered in paperwork. Maybe that one was the only one that didn't make him mad. Yeah, I don't know. There's supposed to be a good answer and a bad answer, I think. I don't know. <laughs> at least there has been most of the other times. Do we really need all three of these special forms? Can't we just write death threats on regular paper? For the last time, Damien, substantive changes within the administrative system requires mastery of the mechanisms of bureaucracy. What if we wrote the death threats on really fancy paper? Liam turns to address you. As you can see, my mastery of real politic has caused me to embrace an unlikely ally in my quest for reform. I have no idea what he's saying. I just want the cafeteria food to stop being so fucking boring. You see, our interests are aligned. I too desire a menu less pedestrian. Sure. Either way, we're stuck on the last bit. We know we want the menu to change, but we don't know what to change it to. Yes, we have indeed encountered a culinary block. Perhaps you can suggest something appropriately artistic. Um, I doubt there was a good answer. Yeah, Damien is a ship concept is pretty hot, but he's got little dick energy. He totally has little dick energy, Kitty. He's probably got the smallest dick of all these characters. <clears throat> um, a white plate with single sprig of parsley in the center, the essence of minimalism. A bowl of knives, the essence of knives. Okay, violence, 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 <laughs> violence. Yes. Now that's interesting. Hmm. Knives? Seems a bit didactic. We'll see how didactic it is when I'm stabbing faces with this bowl full of knives. You don't know what didactic means, do you? Red. Nope. But I do know how funny it'll be to watch a bunch of nerds try to finish a knife bowl. Damien's application to add knives to the menu is a success. He starts holding daily knife eating contests. There are no winners except Damien, who thinks it's hilarious. And you, who came up with this. There are sometimes winners. <laughs> Let's go. All right, auditorium. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves had descended to give you figurative oral sex. Oh, we've, we've read this one before. Okay. Come on, let's go. Let's go. That's a repeat. You're chilling out, not murdering anybody when Damien slinks up to you. He's hauling a large sack with the words definitely not a corpse written on it. Hey, um, you're not going to believe this, but there's definitely actually a corpse in this bag. You never would have guessed. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I'm not saying I'm exactly responsible for making this corpse, at least not without my lawyer present. <laughs> but let's just say he and I are apparently had very different definitions of rock, paper, scissors. Anyway, I'm not interested in going back to jail, so I need your help with help me hide this body real quick. It would be an extremely attractive thing to do. Luckily, hiding dead bodies is kind of your thing. You share your brilliant solution. <laughs> yeah, we're doing better. We're doing better, Kitty. Disguise him as a drinking fountain. No one will know the difference. Just chuck him in my garage. He'll blend perfectly in with my collection of vintage dead bodies. I feel like... I feel like my Frankenstein's monster character would definitely have a garage full of dead bodies. Like, she would have that. So, yeah, let's go. You threw the corpse in the back of Damien's dread chariot and hoof it over to your garage. 
holy hell are all these yours? Some of these are real classics. Michael Jackson, Alf, Pope John Paul I. Wait a second. These are all people I murdered. Have you been stealing my murders this whole time? All this time, I thought you were a super cool serial killer, but you're really just a low life kill stealer. Shame on you. Get your own murder victims. I am sucking at this. <sighs> Damien storms out of your house. Smoke literally coming out of his ears. Damn, you hoped he wouldn't notice. You lose mine at... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not good at this for him. Shouldn't you be out there trying to romance a classmate or something? Anyway, welcome. Okay, we're too poor for everything, so we're getting this. Catch you later. Mind control lessons part one, because inside every person there's a potential surf. I am, I'm just totally blowing. I did so good with Polly, and then we did a short run with Let's Scott, go. and I did so good. I did so good. And like, me and Damien just are not connecting. I'm just, I, I, we're just not connecting, okay? Listen, Karen, you can totally sit with us. I just hope you didn't bring a gun to a bazooka fight. <laughs> yeah, we're showing off our best flasks. Well, not the best flask exactly, but the best contents. Good God, are literal actual flasks of alcohol openly allowed in the school cafeteria? Are there no rules? Apparently not, because Polly starts setting a series of flasks down on the table. Okay, so this is beer, my WC wine, whiskey, apple alcohol, and soul of an infant. Ha, weak. This is radioactive absinthe, this is fire, and this is literal poor life choices. Okay, but this one has another smaller flask inside. It is the ultimate flask. They could probably go on like this for goddamn ever. Maybe you can cut in with the craziest thing of all, but think carefully about whom you want to impress with your flask contents. Yeah, the vibes are totally off, Ariel. I am I am not. Hopefully we can get the date so that at least we kind of like check that to do off the list, but I don't think we're ever dating Damien again after that, after this one. Get ready for the most hardcore badass thing. This flask contains an ancient genie that grants you three wishes, but I'm totally asking it because I don't give a fuck. I grant my own damn wishes. Want to get a dope party started? The flask has ultra whiskey, which you can only get with two bottles of the best purest whiskey and make them mate. I think this is the poly answer. No, I think the mating is the poly answer, okay? Theory. Damien is one of those, like, he's like an ace uh, spectrum person. He doesn't actually like sex. He's just super into BDSM. But, like in an ace way. Okay, I think that's how I have to engage with him. I think. Yeah, this is like the headcanon I'm developing. Okay, anyway, we're doing the genie. Yep, you're right, hardcore, so hardcore. You could ask for anything, wealth, power, immortality, a free pass for teachers to ignore bad behavior forever and let you do whatever the fuck you want without suspension. But instead, you're just gonna drink the genie? It's like you're drunk from your poor life choices flask and I love it. I didn't even know you could drink a genie. You and Damien pop open the flask and drink the genie together. It's definitely just water, but Damien seems to think, seems to drink so much alcohol and energy drinks that he's literally forgotten what water tastes like. Normally you'd say that couldn't possibly be healthy, but fuck it, he's a demon from hell. He can probably do whatever. What a glorious bonding experience. I figured him, I, I feel like, Let's go. I think I, I figured it out now, but I think I figured him out too late. Okay. Auditorium again. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel that you're not as good as the role requires you to be. There doesn't seem to be an ordinary way of getting yourself there. There might be an extraordinary way. You summon the... Oh, we did this one. I read this. Yes, yes, yes. Suddenly, you hear the elegant gurgling sound of water trumpets. Miranda's about to issue a royal wow, decree. To Miranda Vanderbilt. I, Princess Miranda Vanderbilt, grant you permission to speak casually with me for a short period. You're welcome. Fuck yeah, you're an awesome at speaking casually. Let's do this. Now that we're speaking casually, I really wanted to tell you about the event of the season. No, not prom. I mean the event of the season for poor people. <laughs> I mean the Royal Winter Surfs Party Mandatory Celebration Festivity of Surfly Service. My serfs and I are total BFFs, so I decided to throw them all a party to celebrate their lifelong mandatory service to the Royal Vanderbilts. And since I love my serfs so much, this party must be the absolute best. I spare no expense. So I'll have my serfs 
build an underwater grand hall for the celebration. It should only take about 12 days of non-stop backbreaking labor. Plus, we'll need decorations for the party, so I'll have some serfs get dressed up and tie themselves to the walls. So cute! And we don't want any of my serfs missing the party if their family members get sick, so we'll have to issue a decree. Serfs are no longer allowed to have families. I'm the most generous princess of all time, but of course, I don't want you to think that I'm spoiling them, so I'll need your mind control classes just to make sure we don't have any serfs insisting that they value their families or anything dumb like that. Oh, I guess I, I am getting this scene because I, I got this little mind control thingy. So I guess when you get the objects, it makes it more likely to trigger certain scenes. That's the first time I feel like the scene has been connected to an item that I got. You hand over your mind control class tape to Miranda. She's so good at controlling you, it's terrifying to think what she'll do with actual mind control powers, but who cares? You stand this watery bay. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I feel like singing. Suddenly, an adorable little eel pops out of Miranda's purse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. That's a great idea, Princess Miranda. Let's sing. Miranda starts belting and the eel starts singing back up while wow, this eel has shockingly great harmony. <laughs> oh my gosh, go mouse. The seaweed is always greener in a democratic state, but my loyal serfs all love my exceedingly high tax rate. Under my rule, under my rule, surflings know better. They'll serve me forever. Now go eat your gruel. Oh my gosh, why won't my mouse click? It's plugged in and everything. What a charming little tune. Who knew that monarchy could sound so fun? Miranda bows while you clap you're enthusiastically. Whoa, 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 wow, and Princess Miranda, you're amazing. You have the prettiest singing voice in the whole wide world. I know, right? My execution serfs made sure that two, that no one in the whole country is a better singer. Now let me introduce you to my song serf, Mr. Phil the Eel. Or is it Feel? Feel the Eel. It's That's me, probably right. Mr. Phil well, Pleasure the to, to meet you. I'm the luckiest deal ever because I, I get to help Princess Miranda plan the winter surf party. That's right. Of course, I need my surfs to do most of the preparations for the party as I'll be entirely consumed by the planning process. The burdens of leadership fall upon royalty after all. For example, I'm going to do the difficult mental work of deciding that there will be drinks at the party. Now that I've done the first half of the work, I'll leave you two to decide what kind of drinks and how we'll get them, and who's going to pay for them, and all the rest of the planning. You're so, 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 so smart, Princess Miranda. We'll take it from here. I must depart. Yay! I'll leave this to you two, because I need to go recline in a velvet chase and gaze out the window long. <gasps> oh, well, wowie! What an amazing opportunity! <laughs> the death of the princess! Oh, shit. Wait, what? Good job, comrade. No need to act, continue the charade, comrade. The tyrant is out of earshot. The Vanderbilt serfs have united together in hatred, and after our years of pain and toil, we'll finally send the princess straight to the depths of her watery hell. Let your loathing boil to the surface as we plan our demise. The foolish party she has planned will be the setting of our assassination. The revolution is here. <laughs> and while I care not what drinks fill the punch bowl, be sure not to partake, I will add in a massive dose of poison to the beverage, ensuring that all of the princess's guards will be decreased by the time the party is through. The revolution is here! My comrade. I take my leave, comrade. May you dream of the end of tyranny and the end of monarchy and the end of Princess Miranda. <laughs> Just as Mr. Mr. Feel the eel is swimming away. Wait, how is he swimming? You're not underwater. Didn't anyone tell the eel the laws of physics? Miranda returns. I'm back. Whew. That gazing was so exhausting. I assume that you're finished planning the drinks. Think fast, it'll break Miranda's heart to know her serfs have plotting to assassinate her, but you can't let her die before the prom. She's the only one with the hookup for the underwater limo. <laughs> Drinking is overrated, Miranda. You can't have drinks at your party, or do you want your serfs getting ideas? You know what? Nowadays, cool kids only drink the latest, trendiest soda flavor poison anecdote. <laughs> it was dark flounder. Okay, we're choosing violence. We're choosing violence. This one. <laughs> really? Amazing! My serfs will love the soda, but more importantly, everyone will be talking about how I'm so trendy and tasteful. 
Miranda gets so excited about the poison antidote soda that she ends up staring at a commercial for them, in which Miranda quells a surf rebellion with excessive force and hands a poison antidote soda to a private police force captain. It's not a great look. You! Now everyone is saying that I'm out of touch with the disgusting, lowly peasant class! How dare they! I have great affection for the underlings who I force to conform to my every whim! I've decided that this whole thing is your fault! Yep, that's right! This is an official royal guilt trip! Suffer you, dummy! The guilt, it burns! Miranda quickly recovers her reputation by insulting an apology video, but you lose your sponsorship deal with soda. I didn't know I had a sponsorship deal with soda. Then my sponsor is cereal! Cereal! Not soda. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're on week six. We're on week six. We're going to pause here. And uh, let's, let's, let's do an ad break. Let's do an ad break. Okay. Go back to the webcam. We're going to turn, we're going to turn that down a little bit. Okay. You guys ready to try some cereal? I'm ready to try some cereal. Okay. So it's like, everything friendly it says high protein keto friendly gluten free grain free soy free wheat free naturally flavored totally delicious childlike cereal for grown-ups it's apparently peanut butter flavored uh four net carbs per serving and 14 grams of protein per serving zero sugar um a serving is one cup now you're so poor already you can't lose more money oh that's true <laughs> okay here we go let's open this so it took a full week to get here. It just got here today. So that's how long it takes to ship. Okay, here we go. Um, this is what it looks like in here. I did get a measuring thing, and one of these is a cup. So that I can show y'all like what a serving size really looks like so you can understand that. Because I, I can't do it with that unless I visualize it. Anyway, I'm going to get the milk and also some scissors to cut, cut open the bag. Um, I'll be right back. So let me, there you go. Enjoy the music, I'll be right back. I got my bowl, I got my spoon. Fix some cereal, y'all. We had poke for dinner um, and I purposefully like only ate half of my bowl so that I would not be too full to eat cereal. Okay, I'm legit so excited, you guys. Like, I don't, I don't know how to express this. Like, I feel, I feel like silly because I've just, I've seen the ads for this stuff so many times and I've always wanted to get it, but I've always been like, I really don't eat cereal that much. Like, what's the point? But this smells amazing. That's legit amazing. You have those scissors too, kitty? Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Okay, so this bowl is pretty deep, but I'm just gonna, so that you guys can see like the serving size, we're gonna probably have, this is, this is the bowl, okay? Let's pour it in here. So you can see, I'm probably gonna eat two serving size. I mean, it, it legit smells like peanut butter. Like, for real. Like, it smells like, you know what it smells like? Okay, so we're gonna do two, two servings. Thank you. Um, have you ever made peanut butter pie before, where you take the you take the crunchy peanut butter and you mix it with um you mix it with like powdered sugar until it gets kind of like crumbly ish. Anyway, it's called, that's peanut butter pie, and you make that with um uh, with like vanilla pudding or whatever. Oh my gosh, Kitty, we're so kitchen twins. Um, and it smells like that. It smells like the peanut butter pie filling. Okay. So this is two serving sizes worth with kind of a lot of milk. So here we go. That's what it looks like. Okay. All right, let's scoot the keyboard out the way. You ready for some cereal ASMR? Y'all ready? Okay. Let's ASMR time. I'm gonna turn the computer audio all the way down. Here we go. Peanut butter obsessed? Okay, well, Kitty, if this is good, you can get him some. Use my code. Okay, let's try this.
This is so good. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. It really does taste like peanut butter. It's not that sweet. It's very like, it's like really heavy on the peanut flavor. Part of peanut butter. Is it too crunchy or for your gums are just right? After the first two bites, I don't feel it's too crunchy. I know what you mean. I also have poor dental health, and so my gums can be kind of sensitive. Um, I think I'm going to be able to eat all of this without it hurting my mouth, I think. It gets crunchy, but it's not like crazy crunchy. Like I'm looking and it's not, it's like not that crunchy or not crunchy enough to trigger my microphone. Like it can't get past the noise gate. So it's like not that crunchy, but it's pretty crunchy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, this is good cereal. Now, if you really want a cereal that's like got the zero sugar or whatever and actually tastes like a kid's cereal, I'm going to tell you this ain't it. Okay, this ain't it. This is more like the level of sweetness that's in like regular Cheerios. It's like if Cheerios released like a um, keto-friendly peanut butter cereal that's like that's basically what this is like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like this flavor i would get more of this but if you do want like actual your cereal to actually be like sweet tasting you would want to add sugar to this And I would say for an adult, about two serving sizes is like an actual like amount that you would eat. So when it has like the, you know, this many grams of whatever, double that. Oh, yes, this would make a really good Rice Krispie bar. It's not so crunchy that it would be like too crunchy for a Rice Krispie. Yeah, this would make a really good Rice Krispie bar with like a little with like a little peanut peanut butter drizzle on top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I gotta go put up the milk. Um, but yeah, this is really good. We'll try another flavor on Saturday, and then we'll try the other flavors on the other um Thursday streams this month. So yeah, thank you so much, Magic Spoon, to sponsoring this uh for sponsoring this month of my streams. Magic spoon. There we go. All right, you guys can get some too. Go to the link that is in the chat. Streams.net, S-T-R-M-S dot net slash magic spoon underscore. It's Karen Terry. And use my code stream one, two, nine, one to get $5 off your first magic spoon. Takes about a week to ship. And then you can have some cereal with me. Okay, I'm gonna turn the volume back up so y'all can listen to some music. I'm gonna put up the milk. I'll be right back. <laughs> Kenny, those are great gifts. <laughs> those are great gifts. Okay, let's take another bite. Yeah, Mr. Kitty, tell Kitty to get you um, a box of the peanut butter. Is that like a wall of nail polish? Yes, Blue, it is. Go back to the game, Karen. You don't have to keep eating cereal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blue, I, I do my own nails, like, all the time. Every single week, at least. Okay. We're definitely gonna finish that bowl of cereal. All right. 
Auditorium. Welcome in, by the way, Blue. How has your week been? I hope it's been good. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you did do a terrific job of acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the... Oh, we got this one. I was fooled into thinking this was a fighting a fighting game. <laughs> We're trying to do a violence run. I'm failing at it. Around the corner, you hear the sound of Princess Lee singing in Elish Makaras. Elish Mak Maracas is hard <laughs> which can only mean one thing oh mr phil the eel oh mr phil the eel i'm so excited for the winter sir i ocean. could sing oh i guess i was going to say that i'm so excited i can burn down a medium-sized village but singing is a great idea too let's do it oh, no, sir. mr phil the eel harmonizes perfectly with miranda's feudal ballad I'm not going to try to sing the whole song. It's not going to work. Though you have served me through and through, as you do the Lord, if I get bored, I'll kill and replace you. You can get some talk singing. That's close enough. You give Miranda and her murderous eel a standing ovation. You were already standing, so technically you just started clapping, but it still counts. ELO, I didn't even see you there, fellow surf. You're definitely not a surf, but you're also not about to correct an eel with a hidden switchblade. Beautiful singing, Princess. It's such an honor to join you in the magical wonder of song. You know, it's times like these that I'm so happy that I have surfs. I mean, if you weren't here, who would listen to my lovely singing voice? Me? Listen to my own voice? I don't think so. So sad. Excuse me. <laughs> Just the thought of Princess Miranda's songs going to waste. Oh, oh don't cry, Mr. Flea, you I know it will make you feel better. Extensive and laborious play planning. Yeah, you're right, Princess. That would cheer me right up. I knew it. In that case, we're missing one critical thing for the winter surf party. Activities! This will likely be the only party my surfs will ever have the chance to So we should make it as fun and memorable as possible. <laughs> Oh, wee! I'm just bursting with ideas, Princess. We could play Shave the Princess's Neck. Each surf will shave your neck with their sharpest sword. Doesn't that sound so adorable? Oh my god, I love it! Everyone will admire how hairless my neck is. I mean, my neck is already hairless. But I guess if everyone used their swords on my neck, it would be even more hairless. Why is this neck? <laughs> or we could dig a special princess pit and fill it up with the cutest animal, feral panthers. Princess Miranda, you could pet the fluffy panthers all night in your special inescapable pit. Yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Feel the Eel, you're a genius. Down with the Mur Kingdom. <laughs> or we could simply sit you down in your gluttonous throne and read aloud one by one a list of atrocities and injustices you have committed until Poseidon himself smites you down. Wahaha, down with the Mur Kingdom. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I love you, princess. <laughs> Mr. Feel the Eel, you're so precious. I didn't even know how peasants could be this cute. <gasps> anyway, as I was saying, wow, a butterfly! Miranda abruptly leaves to chase the butterfly, but wait, that means you're alone with. Comrade. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, um, Miranda, Miranda's a little bit, a little bit cray cray. I shouldn't have taken a bite just then, it was time to read. It's always time to read. What's up, Oreo? Yeah, I'll move this stuff out. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. I know, you dumb. You dumb, baby. Can't get to the dog. Your dog can be dumb. You have done well to weather the tyranny of the Vanderbilt so far, but fear not. The day of their demise is fast approaching. So evil princess is falling into her trap just as we intended. She thinks she's just choosing a party activity, but then she will actively choose them for her own death. Ha! The irony is as delicious as the sweat of the poor Bye, comrade. <laughs> ah, she returns. Bye, comrade. May the blood of the I too excited to pull the muscle. Oh, I'm so sorry, Blue. I'm so sorry. Oh, you can relax. Hang out. I mean, farewell. <laughs> 
Ah, party planning can be so stressful, but I feel so much better after vivisecting that butterfly. Fun fact, the most beautiful part of the butterfly is its gorgeous, glistening stomach in it. Oh, did Mr. Phil run off again? Well, whatever. His party activity suggestions were just so perf. We can just use one of them, unless you have anything better in mind. Impress Amanda with a killer party activity. Well, not literally killer. Ideally, you're hoping for something fun, family-friendly, and assassination-proof. Welcome in, Moon's Companion. How's it going? So happy to see you. So happy to see you. Oh, Lunar, you changed your name. Hey, Lunar. How's it going, friend? We tried the peanut butter flavor um, of the cereal, by the way. I don't know which one you got, because I know you got one, but um, but it was good. I really enjoyed I'm I'm still eating it, but it's hard to eat in voice act at the same time, but yeah, I got some over, over here to the side. Um, okay. The security game, if you murder someone, you lose. Hey, thank you so much for the howl. Oh, oh, kitty, play a howl for you, Lunar. <laughs> if you're looking for a game that serves as an opium of the people, but there's no better opium of the people than actual opium, so a game about smoking lots of opium. Okay, we are choosing violence. We are choosing violence. So we cannot choose this. So we have to go with drugs. We have to go with drugs. Ugh, disgusting! What? She doesn't like it? Ew, you're suggesting letting the serves taste the opium riches of my kingdom? Opium is for regal delicacy. It was created to help rulers de-stress from the difficulties of constantly having our whims catered to. Serfs couldn't handle such an experience. What could they possibly fe feel stressed about? What a commoner. Plus, if we allow serfs to partake in all of our finest delicacies, how will we differentiate the serfs from the royalty? It'll be madness! Ugh, if the serfs wanted to try opium, why did they choose to be born poor? Miranda is deeply offended by your lack of class distinction and decides to punish you by gentrifying your apartment building. You lose your favorite neighborhood bodega as well as minus two creativity and minus one charm. Gosh, I am just losing all the stats this run. I have lost so many stats, you guys. <laughs> Who's the Anon narrator? Me. Yeah, the game hasn't told me that there's any like character that's the narrator. So I assume it's just like omnipotent voice. You've just sat down to eat with Damien and Liam. Well, to eat with Damien. Liam's just taking pictures of his food. When a leather clad figure drops from the air vent onto your table, it's the Slayer. Prepare to die! Oh my god. <laughs> it was literally, it literally is a Slayer. Lunchtime's over, dirt bags. Time to die. This already happens when we sit together. Your death-based rhetoric is offensive. Don't spoil my food pick. Oh, I'll spoil more than your food pick, Count Stankula. I'm about to spoil your face. Just his though, right? Both of your faces. Fuck. The Slayer is right between the three of you. You can't save Liam and Damien, but if you act fast, you might just be able to save one. Immobilize Damien's with the Lord Prayer while Liam escapes. You've been waiting for this moment your whole life. Flip the table for justice. You can't do this one. This one. Violence, violence, violence. Violence. Normally when you flip tables, it's out of anger or mischief, but this is about the most righteous table flip ever performed. No, my footing! No, my artificially arranged cafeteria food. Yes! Fuck it up, school property! The Slayer ends up pinned under the table along with Liam. Damien jumps down there and starts punching indiscriminately, not caring who he hits. So, you know, just another normal day for Damien. I've never felt so alive. Offensive. Whatever. Let's flip the rest of the tables in the cafeteria while the flippin's good. You righteously flip every single table in the cafeteria. With each table you flip, you find Damien is flipping a little more for you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, his hat's super subtle. <laughs> Alright, achievement unlocked. Monster Prom the musical. We did auditorium every time. 
That day while rehearsing for the class play, you're struck with a lightning of inspiration. Come up with the ultimate nick. Oh, we saw this one. Okay, we can just click through it. It's okay, Blue, you can do it. After advising her with the party drinks and activities, Miranda decides to officially invite you to join her party planning committee. Of course, Miranda's invitation is an official draft notice including death threats for refusal or tardiness and an armored guard detail to fetch you for an immediate emergency Ladies meeting. And salutations. Oh my god. You choose what monster to play, though. Yes, you choose from four different ones that you play. So I'm like a Frankenstein's monster looking thing. I'm so glad you could make it. Welcome you two to our final official planning meeting for the Winter Surf Party. Party! Woohoo! It's an honor to be in Princess Miranda's Divine Committee. The surfs are so excited for the party. And I'm excited too. I can't wait to see the looks of joy on the faces of the surfs. It warms a ruler's heart. Yeah, I think all of these scenes got unlocked because I got that, that hypnosis thing. However, there has been a slight planning setback. A few dozen serfs had the audacity to die during their party preparation work. Something about exhaustion and chronic dehydration and horrendously inhumane working conditions. Yeah, such an such icky rebellion. But don't worry, I officially uninvited any serfs rebellious enough to die before the party, so that little matter is solved. And now we move on to the main subject of our meeting: the cake. Whoa. Whoa, how lucky the serfs are that you're serving c c cake. What kind of cake is it, Princess Linda? <laughs> Good question, Mr. Feel the Eel. We're serving many great cakes. My most anticipated one is a simple angel food cake. The two main ingredients in the cake are angels and food. It will be the most delicious cake ever. I am told that masqueraded angel meat gives the most delicate, subtle flavor. I wouldn't know, of course, as my eating serves handle all of my tasting for me. Holy bubbles! Holy bubbles! This cake sure sounds heavenly. Princess, did you get my joke? But since the cake will be the centerpiece of the whole party, simply tasting delicious won't be enough. Once I saw a man hop out of a cake at a bachelorette party. I'm unsure how he lost all of his clothes, but the effect was incredible. What's up? Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, we need some kind of marvelous surprise inside the angel food cake. Language is important. I am so sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah, I'll eat that tonight. He's cleaning out the fridge, making sure he doesn't throw something away that I will eat. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yes, we need some kind of marvelous surprise inside the angel food cake. Mm -hmm. Hmm, what kind of surprise would excite the serfs? Perhaps a copy of our Mer Kingdom's constitution, signed headshots of their beloved princess, or coupons for extra punishments. What do serfs even like? But, but princess, you've been working so hard planning the party, why don't you let Karen and I come up with a surprise? After all, you deserve a surprise more than anyone. Freedom, kitty. <laughs> oh, Mr. Feel the Eel, I couldn't agree more. I shouldn't have to work hard on anything, ever. But I don't want to make it too easy on you, so I demand that the cake contains two surprises inside. Each one of you should come up with one surprise. <laughs> oh, I assure you, Princess, you'll be surprised. Your face will be painted with the shock so intense that the bells of justice will finally ring across the watery valleys of the Mer Kingdom. Perfect! That's what I'm going for. Well then, I'll off to go prepare for my party guillotine. Oh, don't worry, it's only for tardy sir. Comrade Feel is here. <laughs> Hail, Comrade Feel is here, the leader of the Murr Rebellion. Once again, I have leveraged my political position with the princess. The stage is set for our coup. The party shall be the start of the new age, an age of reason, an age of freedom, the age of new Murr Kingdom. Yeah. Jane, you made it, you made it. We're um, we're trying to romance Damien by choosing violence. We're doing very badly. Um, I'm not a violent person, apparently. I shall use this ridiculous cake surprise scenario to plant a deadly and vicious assassin inside the dessert itself. When Princess Miranda slices into the cake, our assassin will slice into her. <sighs> Freedom to the serfs, death to the princess. We shall toast to the rise of the proletariat. Ugh, Mr. Feel the Eel is such a party prefer. 
If you wish, you can plan some kind of second cake surprise, as the princess mentioned, but whatever you do, she'll not live to see it. My assassin shall end her faster than she ended the life of my brother, Mr. Jaleel the Eel. Glory to the new Mer Kingdom. <laughs> I shall see you on the morrow, comrade. Glory to the new Mer Kingdom. Thank you so much for your applause, too. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Feel the Eel slithers away. Quick, come up with a counter surprise that will neutralize Mr. Feel the Eel's deadly cake assassin. Very convincing propaganda in favor of royalty. The assassin's grandma, in order to scold him about committing regicide, grandma's hate regicide. Yeah, I'm hoping for that too, Kitty, but it doesn't seem like we have an option for that. What's more violent? Grandma's or propaganda? I wonder if you can take side characters to prom. I don't know. But e the eel is only seem to appear in these little scenarios. Grandmas, grandmas are more violent. Okay, grandmas hate rage aside. Not so charming. <laughs> I'm losing so much. I'm losing so much points. I have lots of creativity, though. <laughs> After some masterful sleuthing work, you discover the identity of Mr. Feel the Eel's assassin. He's hired the actual specter of communism. The ghost loves common ownership of the means of production, and he assassinates as a side gig on the weekends. Wow. After speaking with your close friend, the invisible hand of capitalism... <laughs> You learn that politically symbolic ghosts don't actually have grandmothers, so you just grab the closest grandma you can find. Her name is Marlene. She loves collecting Christmas ornaments, and her niece helped her set up a Pinterest account. So you stuff Marlene into the cake right alongside the specter of communism. Who will win? An immortal, politically motivated German assassin ghost or Marlene, the grandma you found? God, you hope this works out. You really want Miranda to survive this party, and Marlene has to make it to her granddaughter's dance recital next week you're so anxious you lose fun and boldness i have negative fun you guys <laughs> okay all right all right okay we're i mean he doesn't dislike us right he doesn't dislike us yo No, we're going for Damien this time. We did the werewolf boy last time. We went to prom. It was cute. <laughs> it was funny, Blue. No, we're asking somebody to prom. Let's go. Cock blocked. This bitch. Be silly, Karen. This is no time to be asking about prom and other commoner celebrations. <laughs> it's time for the Royal Winter Surf Party, mandatory celebration festivity of surfly service. Yes, my princess, it will be a party to die for. <laughs> oh, Mr. Feel the Eel, your words are so kind and completely devoid of any underlying meaning. Indeed. Oh boy, you hope your efforts to disarm Mr. Feel the Eel's plans for assassination have worked. <laughs> The day of the party happens in. Your plans fail? You've been such a lazy and stupid party planner that you weren't even able to stop an assassination? A rebellious faction from the Mer Kingdom Surf arises to end Miranda with no mercy. Such a party pooper. Well, we got a secret ending. <laughs> um, that was cool. I don't know if there's bad endings in this. I mean, I know you can ask and fail because I read the Steam achievements, but I'm trying to do this like pretty blind. So. <laughs> big oof, big oof. <laughs> oh, are you filing complaints? Well, not enough silverware diversity in the cafeteria. God, you guys. Most likely to make Pluto a planet again. <laughs> oh, I got
got an achievement for that. That must have been like a really special secret ending. Miranda died. <laughs> it was hard to deal with. It reminded you that life is something precious, always to be cherished, as you never know when it will be gone. There's a lot of discussion about the Mer Kingdom coup. Nobody could deny that the Vanderbilt crown has always imposed a violent tyranny over their kingdom while ruling with an iron fist. They've caused suffering to many, and you caught yourself more than once thinking that Mr. Feel, the eel, and the rest of the rebellion made a valid point, even if it was through extreme means. Then Miranda wasn't free of guilt. She was always prone to be merciless towards her subjects, who seemed to be less than sentient beings to her. So maybe the coup was the last desperate cry for help from people who deserve freedom and justice as much as anyone else. Maybe violence was the only language the Vanderbilt crown knew. Maybe they left the rebellion no other choice. And yet, even if imperfect and to horrendous depths, she was still Miranda. You loved her no matter her faults. And then all of a sudden she was gone. Yes, her death might have been for the better of the Mer Kingdom masses, but you miss her. No music. Oh my god! <gasps> Look at these pictures! They all crying! They all crying! Eat my cereal. I definitely didn't do it. Not me. Nothing, no, nothing to do with it. <sighs> mm hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> and Polly's was great. Oh, Damien is really upset. Well, he's royalty too, so of course he probably is, like, really sad about it. Wow. That was a serious ending, you guys. <laughs> the yellow blob? I don't know. I haven't seen him before. <sighs> Another cereal all in my teeth. Okay. All right. <laughs> in memorandum of Miranda Vanderbilt, 1999 to 2018. Wow. Wow. 25 new images in the gallery. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kitty. Thank you so much. Oh my word. So these are all these different secret endings. So we've gotten two secret endings. So we got we got this one. Here's some various Polaroids. We have so many. So many still to unlock. But look at all these ones. <gasps> we got a Polaroid of everyone's funeral reaction. Oh my god. The more art. Very cool. Very cool. Added you to my stream as Twitter. What? Okay, I'll have to add you back, Lunar. I'll have to add you back. Fan art. Oh, that's cute. The monster stuff. There's like all these extra characters in here and I don't really know what that's about. Anyway. Okay, we'll do a short one. We'll do a short one. Just like we did last time. So we did a long one and then we'll do a short one. Short game. I wanna keep my personal Twitter and stream, stream Twitter separate. Oh, I understand. Okay. We can skip this, we've already seen this. Skip, skip, okay. Yeah, see here's the player characters. So this is Shadow, I don't know what the yellow blob is, but it's Shadow Guy, Fire Girl, zombie dude and I like to pick her and when I look at them like she's me you know what I mean okay. Okay. yay yay hail king comrade feel did the text to speech work I didn't hear it but I, I saw it go off so I think you guys heard it Monster prompt. Okay, fantastic. 
<laughs> Hail King Comrade Feel. That's right. Huzzah! Okay, we can skip this. We don't we've already read all this. <laughs> Yay! What? Okay. It sounded like you inhaled helium and said it good. That's what it's supposed to sound like. Okay. Here's what we're doing. This is a short run. Short run. We're choosing violence. We're choosing violence and we're going for Damien again. Okay. So violence, violence, violence. We're choosing violence here too. You build a hundred foot statue commemorating an event so that in a thousand years, archeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? Your least favorite political figure being devoured by a rabid rhinoceros, which are also covered in badass tattoos. That mind-blowing twist of your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all the boring stuff they show on the news. That glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Yeah, it... Yeah, it derailed things. Um... If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? A swan. They're classy, plus it reminds me of the myth of Lita and the swan, so at least by bestiality standards it has a certain chic appeal. A human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes and stupid questions like this one. Wow, you're, you're fun at parties. A great white shark. I have to fuck an animal, so at least make it story worth telling. We're choosing violence, shark. What would be the most appealing in a love partner? A big horn, sharp fur... A soft fur, sharp wits, a very tsundere personality, a taste for party kawaii eyes. A big horn. Okay. Oh, I see. It's next to the ones. Okay. So I picked the Damien one because it pops up next to the... I understand the UI there now. I get it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. For Damien, I think we go... I think we go bath. Let's do a bathroom run. Okay. Bathroom run. Bathroom run for Damien. Violence. Violence happens in the bathroom. Let's go. Okay, let's go. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathroom. You give zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. Okay. Later, you hear some kind of muffled squawking and you see that Damien's backpack seems to be thrashing violently. Okay, it's a sign. It's a sign. It's a sign. Greetings, fellow classmate. Yay, Karen is here. I've been waiting all day to show someone Damien's cock. Hmm. Miranda, do you ever listen to yourself? Miranda pulls Damien's cock out of his backpack and the rooster begins preening himself contentedly. <laughs> Isn't he the sweetest little thing? <laughs> yeah, we're going to use him for cockfighting. Specifically, we're going to have him cockfight the cockfighters to teach them a lesson. You shouldn't make cocks cockfight. Now we're just gonna find a way to make sure that our cock wins the anti cock fighting cock fight. Lift your rooster spirits with a romantic proposal. Give your cock a cock ring. If this cock isn't an expert on violence, you are, Damien. Go undercover as a rooster. Violence, 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 violence. Fucking metal! Okay. Oh man, I didn't think of that. I love finding opportunities for violence. With that, you, Damien, and Miranda get to work on Damien's incredible chicken outfit. It's sort of just a yellow jumpsuit with feathers haphazardly glued to it. People are dumb, so it might work. We pander to him and he hates it. Exactly, Kitty. He doesn't want us to like him. He just wants us to push him towards violence. It's all he wants. You follow them to the cock fight, but on arrival, you see a chess tournament. The cocks are fighting each other at chess but i hate chess it's like a tiny little war with no violence and all too much waiting around and planning nobody but polly's into that shit i hate planning i just want to rush blindly into violence maybe i'll sit on the chicken with it i'll find some other fucker to mess up Bacow! squawk okay that's your cue to go because it definitely seems like damien's rage could very well be directed at you damn minus two boldness and minus one fun well he loved it so it's worth it baby he loved it, so it's worth it. Is this a good idea? I, go. I don't know, Lunar, but it's an idea. <laughs> okay, here we go. Damien's table. Let's go. You come upon Damien sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware spread while her eating serfs chow down obediently at a neighboring table. I still don't get why you collect all these stupid forks and spoons and shit. What a noob. I mean, even the knives don't really look that deadly. 
Silly boy, this silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing. That's lame as hell. It's basically useless. I mean, you don't even eat. Your serfs do it for you. Well, of course they do. But they're not using any of your silverware. Naturally, they aren't. Serfs must eat with their hands, as benefits the lower class. So you're saying that silverware collection has no practical purpose? Things have practical purpose? These two could go around and around like this forever, unless you say something to resolve the dispute. Damien's right, Marmy. Maybe it is time you start murdering people with your silverware. Lay off Miranda Damien. No, obviously not that. We want this one. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Um, hang on. All right. So anyway, that's like the 20th time that that's happened since we've moved into this house. These fire alarms, they don't detect fire. They detect, like, particles in the air, and they're like, fucking go. Okay. Maybe it's done. He just turned it off three times in a row, and it immediately came back on. But this time he did it and it didn't. So maybe it's done. I think. I hope. <laughs> yeah, Kitty, it's kind of funny now because it's happened like I'm. I mean, I'm not exaggerating when I say like 20 times. But when the first time it happened, I was so pissed because <laughs> I didn't know how to turn it off. But now we know how to turn it off. Um, unfortunately, it just comes right back on sometimes. Um, so yeah. <laughs> They're so sensitive. I don't know. There's some kind of like modern thing that detects particles instead of like actual smoke, um, which means that it finds out if there's going to be a fire faster, but it also detects fire when all you're doing is running the oven. There's no fire. There's, n there's nothing. There's nothing. We took the batteries out of ours for some reason. Very sensitive, but we then we had a fire and it wasn't plugged in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Levi probably won't let us take the batteries out, but like I really want to. I really want to. Anyway, let's keep going. I mean, I was just giving her shit, but I'm in favor of any plan that gets more people murdered. Oh, how barbaric! Are you sure that's the right thing to do? Yup, 100%. Absolutely. Well, all right then. Yum yum? Daisy, take the sharpest of these silvered wares in your filthy peasant hands and go a murdering, would ya? I was kind of hoping you would do the murdering yourself. If we're living in an age wherein a lady can't outsource her senseless murders to her servants, I don't know what the world's coming to. Fair enough. As long as the murders get done, I guess I don't care. Miranda even outsources some silverware murders to you and Damien as a team. It really brings you closer to each other. So nice. Let's go. Who's texting Levi about the fire alarm? But I know! Meow meow, that was very distressing, lady. <laughs> Alright. Bathroom. Bathroom every time. Okay, that day you skip class and just hang out in the bathroom because you respect no authority. While in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny, big-eyed turtle with your bare hands. That means that monstrous act would instantly give you 500 boldness? Do I actually get 500 boldness? I don't think so, but come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? <laughs> like, sorry, sorry. You know what? You can keep plus two boldness anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. Okay, so I got a little bit of boldness. As you enter the bathroom, you notice that there's something a little different about it. Specifically, the different thing is that it's on fire. Oh man, can you believe it? The bathroom's just randomly caught on fire for no reason. On the wall, you notice some graffiti reading, Scott is more swole than Damien 5 ever. <laughs> but surely this is unrelated. Shit, dude, I can't de get detention again. I have an urgent appointment with someone. And by that, I mean my fists have an urgent appointment with their face. And if my fists can't make that appointment, Damien cracks his knuckles. Better think of a way to save him. Um, call Scott and have him pee it out. If there's one thing we know about Scott is that he loves to pee on things. If you burn down the whole school, no one will be worrying about one little bathroom. Okay. Violence, 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 violence. Violence. That's 
right. So you're saying I should fight fire? With fire? It's so simple. Anytime I have a problem, all I have to do is set it on fire. And if that fire causes any new problems, I can just set those problems on fire. It works in every situation. I can't believe I never thought of this before. Apparently it did. Apparently it did, Kitty. Violence. It just Violence. You just have to single-mindedly think violence. Damien doesn't even get around to setting the whole school on fire. He's too busy writing his new self-help book, Fighting Fire with Fire, a foolproof guide to inevitable success in all situations. It sells a million copies. Damien shares the profits with you and you gain plus three money. Fuck yeah. Okay, Let's bathroom. Go. Let's go. That day you visit the bathrooms to take a number two. Don't worry, there won't be an illustration of that specific moment. Thing is, if you make one of the boldest decisions of your life, you don't put paper on the toilet seat before using it. Look at you, you crazy bastard. You gain plus two boldness and plus one. Huh? Staphyl Staphylococcus? And a slight chance of plus one STD. Yet we finally have a little bit of money, Kitty. It's amazing. Out of the corner of her eye, you notice Damien playing with a big knife, like he's trying to figure out where to stab himself with it. Noob. Hey, why'd you stop me? I was about to give myself a sweet body mod. You know, they say body modifications are forever, but the shock value sure isn't. I broke my horn off and my dads were only pissed off for what, three weeks? Maybe I'm just not going hard enough. I need something that will really freak everybody out, like a tattoo of my face on my face. No, too subtle. Hey. You look like a deviant. Got any good ideas for sick body mod? Um, you're thinking too big. It's the tiny details that really freak people out. How about a tattoo of your face on the tip of your tongue? Gun hands. I think he wants gun hands. I think he wants gun hands, but I'm really not sure. I think, yeah. Fuck me, why didn't I think of that? Half the killer robots at the school have gun hands and they're fucking sweet. Like I really only use my hands for hurting people anyway. What do I need all these fingers for? Catch you later. I'm gonna go chop off my hands with a meat cleaver and say hello to bullet handshakes. Later you find Damien in the hall punching lockers with his surprisingly regular hands. It's so unfair. They won't sell me gun hands just because I've done a few too many murders. I guess it's just you and me and our regular hands against the system. You're actually sort of relieved that Damien didn't end up with gun hands. Plus, helping him beat up half the school to blow off steam is a real bonding experience. Plus two fun and plus one boldness. Yeah, yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good so far. And it's a short one, so we have Let's less go. chances to fuck it up. Okay, here we go. Damien table. Ugh. Mouse, cooperate. Here we go. You sit down to enjoy a nice normal meal at the spooky high school cafeteria as usual. Lol, just kidding. Something fucked up is always going on here and today's no different. Bro. Oh, hello, Karen. Did you want to come sit with us and our imaginary friend, no one else is here. Their imaginary friend roars and the whole cafeteria shakes. Okay, Karen, you have some smarts. You're probably gonna figure this out pretty quickly. Why do we have a wild beast under our table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because we totally forgot our plan. Scott, no we didn't, shut up. We're gonna teach it the piano. Or maybe the saxophone. I lost my notes. No worries, no notes needed. You know exactly what they should do with this wild beast. The wild beast should be the new school mascot, put on a sports jersey and let him rock. Go team. It's obvious you bought such a beast to the kitchens to turn it into the next monster chef champion so you can split the big monster chef cash prize. What? Neither of these are violence. But this one seems super Scott, so this one must be Damien. D yes, okay. What a kick-ass idea, which was obviously ours. You're right, that was our idea. Hooray, we're geniuses. And I have just what we need here, training montage music. Suddenly you start a training montage in which the three of you try to teach cooking to the wild beast. You suck at it since you're not big chefs yourself and also because it's a wild beast and it keeps on devouring people and wreaking havoc. But it's quite an epic training montage. Afterwards, you've all, you're all sitting excited in front of a portable TV. The Monster Chef Show is about to start. You're holding cute supportive signs and you even got yourself a custom made t-shirt of the wild beast. Whoa, this is a big day. Also, 
How is it that we trained the wild beast and it's now on the show if it's still noon and the cafeteria time hasn't ended? Shh, Scott, time works different in mysterious ways when it comes to training montages. Okay, boys, I only hope it isn't a souffle challenge. We know the wild beast isn't good at souffles. The wild beast isn't good at anything, aside from devouring people and wreaking havoc. You quietly watch the show. The challenge is Beef Wellington. Fuck yeah, no souffle. Not so surprisingly, one of the challenge once the challenge begins, the wild beast just starts to devour the other contestants and destroys the show's set. You see the judges screaming, "Who the fuck let a wild beast enter the competition?" The wild beast is disqualified. Well, I guess that's it. We might not have won the cash prize, but we won the most valuable of prizes. The prize of laughing at our wild beast fucking up everything on the Monster Chef set, which is a memory we will cherish forever. Is Damien ready to cherish memories that include you? Wowie! All right, here we go. Let's go! Bathrooms. That day you skipped class intending to spend the term in the bathrooms, but you encountered three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they prepare you for. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you've totally gained plus two boldness. Of course, no trip to the bathroom will be complete without running into a group of your classmates doing something stupid. Uh, Damien, you're the worst. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. She means that in a bad way. Did you really just set fire to our entire deck of cards? I don't know. Do the deck of cards have to keep dealing with shitty hands? Not necessarily. That's not how probability works. Well then, I guess I didn't necessarily need to set it on fire, but since when has that stopped me? Well, now you've stopped all of us from playing poker. Now what are we going to bet on? Mama needs a new pair of shoes. Yes, and I derive almost an almost sexual pleasure from taking your money. So, what's the new game? Oh, oh, you know the perfect poker alternative. Russian roulette. Violence, 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 violence. Oh, Polly likes it. Oh, but he likes it too. She doesn't like it. Oh, yeah, why didn't I think of that? That used to be my favorite game before I died. Wait. Owen! Polly pulls an antique revolver out of nowhere, spins the cylinder, points it at her head and pulls the trigger five times until it fires. The bullet goes through her intangible head, bounces off the ceiling, and embeds itself in the mirror right next to all the other bullet holes. I guess Vera and I split the money. Dang, I always lose at Russian roulette. Let's play again. I'll go first. How, how you ever died is a mystery. Hey, yeah, me too. You decide to get out of the bathroom to avoid any further ricochet. From the gunshots echoing behind you, it seems your friends are all delighted with your suggestion. Plus two fun and plus one smarts. Okay. Bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. Ah, thank you so much for the howl, Lunar. But you don't stop there. You want the world to know how reckless you are for the rest of eternity. So you do some graffiti on the wall. No way. The graffiti says, I'm bold as fuck. And you know what? It turns out the wall is a magical wall that grants wishes. What a wall. A deep voice resounds from within the wall and says, well, not bold as fuck, but maybe a bit bold. And then you gain plus two boldness. Oh boy, that's an opinionated wall. Anyway, lucky you. You're chilling in the bathroom when Damien and Miranda with Damien Ramit. Thank the gods for co-ed bathrooms. Everything's going great, and you're obviously very cool until you hear some noises. Oh snap, it's Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor. Damn, we're done. If I get caught skipping class again, they're gonna feed me to the school's dragon. Or even worse, they'll make me come in on Saturday. <gasps> this is bad. I didn't bring my champion who would fight to the death to defend my honor. What can we do? It seems they're both waiting for you to do something. But how do you scare a werebear? No time to think. You bust out of the stall and... Make yourself as big as possible. It's showtime. Play dead until he goes away. Um, I have a lot of boldness, so I feel like I should make myself as big as possible. Welcome back. Welcome back, Lunar. Puff out your chat cheeks. Um, stuff a bunch of toilet paper in your shirt and wave your arms in the air. Crazy Martin has no idea what the hell's happening. He thinks he's having a flashback to Nom. As Martin flees the bathroom, Damien puts a hand on your shoulder. That was stupid as hell, but you sure scared him to death. Stupidity plus bravery is my favorite mix. You're rad. Yes, that was superb. For a moment, you scared me too. So convincing. You're my knightess in shining armor. Defeating a werebear with nothing more than a to than toilet paper? That's something to remember. Plus two bold and plus one creativity. 
I was looking up the number on the bathroom stall. A lot of people have called it. Where does it go? Where does it go? Does it go anywhere fun? Let's go. Let's go. Okay, over here. Strange. You could have sworn Polly and Damien were at this table when you Noob. picked it. Psst, loser. Down here. Hey, boo. It's us, Polly and Damien, hiding under the table for totally innocent reasons. A ferocious war sounds from the door of the cafeteria. Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor, is here, and he's looking for someone. Oh shit, he's here. Why is he after us anyway? I think what we did really falls more under federal jurisdiction. International law, more like. Those munchkins were Canadian citizens. Now that you mention it, I think we might actually have to face the war crimes tribunal. Worth it though, right? Oh, totally. As long as we can get away from Buzzkill the bear over there. Um, just hide in the ghost zone. You know, the spectral alternative dimension only ghosts can use. <laughs> Obviously, that's the poly answer. Hide behind diplomatic immunity. I mean, you're both princes of hell. Right? Right. <laughs> not me. I'm not. I'm not even a princess of hell. Guess you should have thought of that before being born a commoner, huh? I wasn't born, Damien. I was died. Well, die better next time. I'll try to keep that in mind when I'm being tried at fairy tale court, court for neglecting munchkin side or for negligent munchkin aside. Great, let me know how it goes. I'm off to crush an orphanage and get away with it because I'm a royalty. Later. There it All right, anyway, they must have got the pizza out of the oven. <laughs> Damien does love fire. Damien does love fire, so it's appropriate. Holy fuck. The stream, the stream, the stream is on fire. That's true. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. All right. After the orphanage crushing, Damien takes you out for ice cream. Sweet, literally. Ugh. Hey, let's go. Ash. Ash apparently came running in here even though it was loud as fuck in here too. I don't even know. Okay, bathroom again. That, yay, I got that achievement. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. On the way there, you run into, um, Ma Mamimi, the Oni girl. She offers you some of her weird Japanese energy drink. You take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Garana seed extract, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams of caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness. Well, it wasn't bad at all. You gained plus two boldness. Thanks, Mamimi. And you proceed to the bathroom. You're daydreaming about how Damien would look walking down the aisle towards you. When you see Damien walking down the aisle hallway towards you. Yo, listen, don't be uncool about this or make it a big thing, but I think you're pretty rad. Like, maybe even as rad as I am. So, excuse me. I thought it might be sweet if we could, you know, do some crime together. Would you be into that? I mean, could you even fucking handle that? Um, yes, of course you could and would and should. What kind of crime are you into these days? Quick, suggest the most badass and romantic crime for an excellent date with Damien. Um, tax fraud and light treason, dinner in a movie, only dinner is arson, and the movie is also arson. Arson? Arson and arson? Sounds like my kind of night. Damien picks you up and presents you with a bouquet of matches and lighters, which you blush and happily accept. Arson. <laughs> exactly, Kitty. The two of you head off to the fanciest restaurant, you know, Le Chateau de Superior. You smile demurely as Damien pulls out your chair for you and then sets it on fire. You confidently order off the menu for both of you before setting both menus on fire. After a delicious meal, the two of you flirtily squabble over the absolute pleasure it would be to pick the check as the flames rage high all around you. Ready to head out for more arson? Heck yeah you are. The two of you head to a movie immediately setting your ticket stubs on fire. You take your seats and set the row in front of you on fire. You talk through the previous as the flames leap higher and higher, bathing you in romantic glow. It's the hottest date of all time in so, so many ways. Hey, I had a really nice time tonight. The only thing better than the arson was the more arson. Is he actually blushing or is it just heat from all so much arson? I just want to apologize to the stream for fire alarm. Very sorry. Okay. Uh, I was just wanting some pizza. <laughs> I just, I was hungry. I wanted some pizza. So sorry. But blame Karen. Good patient. It was all my fault. And uh, yeah, I hope you all are having a wonderful stream. Have a good night. 
came in here to see if you wanted the last piece of pizza in the fridge. But you were oh, yeah, I'll eat it. Okay. It's actually thematically relevant because we're doing we're doing monster prom and we're trying to date the fire demon guy. So. Well, I'm not liking fire demon guy, so don't date him. <laughs> He's bad news and he's on my nerves. <laughs> so Tino's are fantastic, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, though. I don't vibe with Damien very well. We definitely will not date him again. Is he actually blushing, or is that just a heat from all of the so much arson? OMFG, this date is literal fire. Uh, but no, like, actually literal fire. You gain plus two charm and plus one boldness. The monster prom draws near. Okay, guys. Let's do For real this time. For real, let's get a, let's get a Damien ending. My boldness is so crazy. Look at that shit. What's up? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to monster prom with you. Prom with you? You dumb yeah. fuck. That's a fucking great idea. Are you some kind of genius or something? I'll tell you what you are. It's my day to prom. Let's make this prom, prom night was awesome. Oh, my dress is cute. My dress is cute, you guys. You and Damien reflected on the fucked up missed adventures you had over the past few weeks. You've definitely been your worst selves. After some good laughs, you conclude, well, I'm definitely going to hell. He stayed silent a bit after that and then added, you know what? I see no problem with that. Best night ever. All right. So that wasn't a secret ending. I guess that was a regular ending. But we definitely got some new events and new outcomes. Damien, best at violence. Most likely to be Razgard, the space goddess of illusion in disguise. Okay. Um, we'll do a little bit of this. The previous video actually got monetization turned off because of this song. So we're not going to let the credits play or anything. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for... Yep. Okay, this is the same ending. That, happened, that we saw uh, last time. Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super legal affair and he ended up in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was flammable. Liam kept doing art so hard he eventually evaporated and became the concept of coolness himself. He left the physical plane and the last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. Scott became an athlete. Not so long ago, he won the prestigious national award for being the best at doing sports. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. There's the blob guy again. Yeah, so this song is really fucking cool, but you're gonna have to go watch the other stream to hear it. Um, we're not, we're not gonna play it. Come on, go away. Oh, yeah, okay because last time I played it and YouTube said, fuck you. Okay, we've got new galleries, let's go look. Okay, oh, yeah, 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 okay. So we got that. I guess, do we have to click on them to make them un-newify? I think so, okay, so let's do that so we can actually tell what we have that's new. Oh, look at that, he helped us with the makeup. No one touches my Miri. Oh, this is cute. Oh, and then there's all the funeral ones. Yeah, okay. More art. Maybe it, maybe I don't have to click them. Maybe it's just new from like this playthrough and when I close the game. Yeah, I think that's how that works. Any of these at the bottom? No. Still just the ones at the top for fan art. It's a pretty, that's a pretty sweet Damien there. Oh, what about this? Oh, I like this. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Oh, and they give you their Twitters. Oh, very cool. Oh. Oh, neato. Okay. Oh, look at that. Damien one looks like digging balls. Ah, true. True. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. Whew. <laughs> that was that was challenging. I've never found um, a dating sim to be difficult, but I actually struggled. I actually struggled. Okay. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Who do we want to raid? Who do we want to raid? 
Um, Ariel is streaming right now and she did pop in before. So I feel like we should probably raid Ariel. Okay, so before we do that, let me get my keyboard back. Where can you find me? You can find me right here on Twitch every Thursday evening and Saturday, noon to two. Next Saturday, we are gonna be doing more of our Sims 2 Legacy because Landon is busy, so she's not gonna be streaming with us. Um, also, next Thursday, we're gonna be doing more Monster Prom. Okay, we're gonna get some more of the Steam achievements. We're gonna romance some more monsters. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a good time um, for spoopy season. Uh, thank you so much to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's episode. Please go buy a box of cereal. Use my link, use my code. It just popped up in the chat. I will also put it in uh, the description for YouTube. So thank you guys so much. Um, and uh, you should also follow my Twitter. That is where you can get all the latest updates on what's going on with streams. So if you want to know kind of what the schedule is, what's going on, you want to be following the Twitter. Um, if you want to watch any of my past VODs, you can go to my YouTube channel. That's where you can find all of my past VODs. I save... Um, all of them that are worth saving, uh, whereas on Twitch, of course, they disappear after a little while. And you can also join my Discord. Not only can you chat with me, which is super fun, but you can get notifications in Discord because you cannot trust YouTube and Twitch to give you actual notifications, even if you want them. So get in my Discord. You can control that. All right, let's raid. Let's raid. We're going to raid Ariel. Okay. And I'll do something on, I'll do something on like the Discord or Twitter or something to give away the other pack of stickers. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.